Hello, I'm Ronnie Beck, and this week's discussion is over women of the revolutionary era. Now, I chose to speak about Molly Pitcher. Uh, as a National Guard field artillery officer, Molly Pitcher actually holds a special meaning to the United States Army's and the Marine Corps field artillery uh, community. Through the United States Field Artillery Association, the Molly Pitcher Award, the Artillery Order of Molly Pitcher, uh, recognizes those individuals who have voluntarily contributed in significant and meaningful ways to the improvement of the field artillery community. This picture is showing the citation that my wife recently received from the Field Artillery Association for her many years of supporting me uh, and also the Phil Artillery community and the Phil Artillery B Battalion, which I commanded. Also, I happen to be attending the United States Army's uh, War College, which is headquartered in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, which happens to be the location of the Molly Pitcher gravesite and several of the local businesses in Carlisle have taken the name after Molly Pitcher such as a brewing company and a restaurant. From information obtained from the United States Field Artillery Association, as long as there have been soldiers willing to fight for the American ideal, there have been spouses standing by them believing in the same cause knowing it would be hard work and willing to support the mission. As in the cold winter of Valley Forge and the summer heat of Monmouth, the Continental Army was accompanied by a few spouses. In 1777, Martha Washington nursed the many sick soldiers at Valley Forge. In 1778, Mary Hayes, later Mary Hayes McCauley, manned a cannon at Monmouth. As frigid and toward Valley Forge was in December of 1777, Monmouth was sweltering and miserable in late June of 1778. The 4th Continental Artillery Regiment had the mission to hold a critical causeway. As gunner William Haynes manned his cannon, his wife carried water to quench the thirst of not only the gunners, but to cool the guns as well. The cannons roared and soldiers fell from both heat injuries and wounds. The causeway was in a state of chaos. In the midst of loud noises, searing heat, and acrid smoke, William fell. His gun was ordered removed from the causeway. Mary would have none of it. She stepped up as if born to it. She worked hard and kept that cannon firing. William's fellow artilleryman noted her swift accurate action. The tale of her efforts passed through the colonial camp that evening. Known to history as Molly Pitcher, a gunner's spouse, Mary Hayes McCauley's story belongs to us all. It is a story of fortitude, determination, and true patriotism. We continue the tradition of the colonial artillerymen at the Battle of Monmouth. Field artillery spouses work hard believe in the American ideal, and support the mission. Just as Molly Pitcher, their tales have passed through the ages. Their deeds have been brought to the attention by the gunners. The story of Molly Pitcher is disputed, uh, and in reality, it may be a combination of different women during the Revolutionary Era, uh, the events that they performed to support the Revolution. In an introduction to the legend of Molly Pitcher by Carol Claver, she points out that studying Molly Pitcher and the myth of Molly Pitcher is important for a couple of purposes. First off, she is a patriotic symbol of the revolution and the women who took part in the war. And then secondly, uh, she states the history of the myth is a vehicle to study the emergence of all myth. Uh, and it is an example of historiography, and it can teach us not only how to see the past, 
but how to preserve and present it uh, for the future. I appreciate your time and I hope everybody enjoys this video. I look forward to your comments and I look forward to seeing your post for this week in class.